So uh, I'm going to share some things. Title my message today is How Did We Get Here? <laughs> 44 years. How did we get here? It's going to be a short message. <laughs> By faith in God. That's how we got here. <laughs> Glory to God. But I'm, I'm not going to. I'm not going to get into the message yet. Glory to God. 44 years. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Yes. I was telling the man yesterday, we, we, um, Lloyd, I think it was, said, we shared a building with the alcoholic anonymous, the AAA. So we had to clean out all the ashtrays before we had service in the afternoon. So I am studying Sunday morning. I've got my message ready, so I'm going over it Sunday morning. And my lovely wife said, do you think anybody will show up today? Oh, my goodness. I said, I didn't need to hear that. But they showed up, and they've been showing up ever since. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Glory. God is faithful. God is faithful. So I want to, um, Proverbs chapter 3, we want to receive, we want to honor the Lord today with our giving. Amen? Amen. Hallelujah. But I, I noticed something this morning, and now I was looking in Proverbs chapter 3. Proverbs chapter 3, verse 5. One of Paul's favorite scriptures. Trust the Lord with all thine heart. Lean not to thy own understanding. In all thy ways, actually that word ways in the Spirit-filled King James says days. Honor the Lord in all thy days. Lean not to your own understanding. In all thy days acknowledge him and he'll direct your paths. Then verse 9 says honor the Lord with thy substance and the first fruit of all thine increase, so shall thy barns. Everybody say barns. barns. Plural. Barns. Say plural. plural. Barns, plural. Yeah. Be filled with plenty. And the press has burst out with new wine. I heard this in my heart, an impression. Because a lot of people don't honor me with their giving is because they don't trust me. And they, and they lean to their own understanding. I can't, I can't afford it. They're just leaning to their own understanding. You see that? Or it don't work. What's that? They're leaning to their own understanding. And because they don't trust him, they don't honor him. Are you here today? Yes. Trust the Lord with all thine heart. We have, uh, we have artists, people, uh, all our family here, they're, they're, they have art, we have artists here. And uh, uh, I asked Matt, I, told, I didn't ask him. He did this for Pastor Darlene. It has her name on it. So I asked her if I could use it. Then I asked Matt. But here, look, look at what he wrote. God isn't asking you to figure it out. He's asking you to trust he's already figured it out. Isn't that good, Tom? He's not asking you to figure it out. He's asking you to trust he already has. Then there's a scripture, Jeremiah 29, 11. I know the thoughts and plans. You know, that's trust. I can't figure it out in my mind how to give, how I can get more by giving away more. He don't ask me to figure it out. He just asked me to trust he's already figured it out. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Keep them coming, Matt. Keep them coming. 
We don't know where he got that. We don't know if he got that in a message from Miss Jeanette or me. So I'm going to say me. I got the power. I got the mic. Honor the Lord. And our barns will be filled with plenty. You know what happens? He'll, you honor him, he'll honor you and fill your barns. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. If we trust him, he'll trust us. And as long as, and because if you get, if you honor the Lord with the uh, substance and the first fruit, then he can trust you to fill your barns because he knows you won't consume it on yourself. Yes, that's right. Amen. Hallelujah. Yeah. If you need to save a loaf for your giving so you can honor the Lord, just raise your hand. The ushers have the save loaves. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. 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 Somebody say glory. glory. God wants you to have plenty. Did you know that? It says, um, your barns will be filled. You know, in the King James, the word with is, was, was not in the original. So you could say, so shall thy barns be filled plenty. Filled plenty. Filled plenty. Right. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory. 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 Plenty. If I say plenty. 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 That's right, Lord. Say thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. My barns, My barns are, filled are filled with plenty. With plenty. Amen. Yeah, but Pastor, my barns aren't filled. Well, you keep saying it. You agree with God. If he said they'll be filled with plenty, say, bless God, they're filled with plenty. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Plenty. 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 The world is struggling. But we have plenty. Amen. Go ahead and minister to the people. Hallelujah. 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 You know, I was uh, reminded of uh, uh, Mr. Uh, Leroy Thompson. He was a struggling pastor, had a Corvair, not a Corvette, <laughs> a Corvair, a rear engine Corvair. And he's at the grocery store. And there's a guy in front of him buying a six-pack of beer, I think. And the guy says, money goeth, doesn't it? And, uh, and, and uh, Pastor Leroy says, it sure does. And uh, he got in his car. And the Lord says, how come you agreed with him? And then the Lord says, if money goeth, money cometh. Yes. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. My, say money, money cometh, cometh to, me now to me now for the sake of the harvest. The guy said money goeth. And the Lord said if it goeth, it cometh. Amen. It's coming. Amen. Money cometh. Amen. I don't think he drives a Corvair now. No. In fact, I think he flies a lot <laughs> Hallelujah. 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 Did you give your offerings? Already? All right. Glory to God. Praise the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Lloyd and Kathy, come down here. Lloyd and Kathy, come down here.
You know, um, we actually started with them before we started the church. And they... Yeah, we got stories. (laughs) Still with us. Lloyd was telling us yesterday about... I thought what happens at Golden Corral stays at Golden Corral. (laughs) Quit pointing your finger, Harry. Yeah, because what you did, we won't say what it was, but it was, I don't think it was against the law then. No, not not then. It would be now. So um, I'm going to have Kathy and Lloyd share a little bit. But I want Kathy to be nice to me. Don't be telling them what I had on when I come to your house. It was awesome. <laughs> I had a necklace. Yep, gold necklace. With a cross. Yep. And an orange jumpsuit. You were. We were. Yeah, that's right. Hungry. Hungry. We gathered up everyone we that we knew. Yeah, yeah. we gathered them all up and uh, squeezed chairs in. And yeah. Lloyd's mom had some of these little mini chairs. <laughs> we could get more people yeah. in. We were all slimmer then, weren't we, you know? (laughs) Yeah. Yes. And um, we were just all so thankful that you came, that you both came. And you think about that, here they were newly married and coming and doing this, and what a step of faith. You really, you really had... (laughs) <laughs> yeah, and everyone that came got what they needed to live a life of faith, faith. and yes, there's challenges as we go along, but it was a life of victory yes. for the things Industries yep. and uh, it was just a beginning, yep. yeah. a wonderful beginning. Yes. yes. <laughs> <laughs> you know, the first time he walked in the door, I was nervous, <laughs> and I was nervous, <laughs> and uh, we was all sitting around and started ministering and started taking notes, and I realized that I wasn't going to be able to take notes because he was talking too fast, so I had to get a recorder so I could record everything, so I could look at, <laughs> listen to it later. So, but it was a total blessing. It all worked out because the guy that told me about Pastor, uh, he worked at Cessna, and he said, we got to talking. He said, well, I know this man and his wife, they're just getting married and they're coming back to Augusta or coming back to Wichita to start a church and I said well I wonder if they'd be interested in coming to Augusta all the way to Augusta and he said well I'll talk to him and so it's all history now so I'm, I'm like one minister said when they didn't have any speaking arrangements somebody asked him would you come they said I have to pray about it you know so when they wondered if we would come to Augusta, I didn't have to pray about it. I, just, I was already prayed up. 
And um, their daughter, Natalie, would grab a hold of my leg and hang on, and I'd preach up and down that, that room where we was at. And they hired, they hired Todd to babysit. But I don't think the pay was very good at that time. No, they didn't. The top. They no, didn't do that. They, did, they didn't do that, did they? No, we should have. No, no, no. That, I was just teasing on that. Yeah. He was just learning how to babysit too. So we know. He was ten, good. ten years old, and he was such a blessing to all the little kids that we had them in the back room, and I sat where I where I couldn't see what was going on back there, so I'd be at peace. <laughs> did a wonderful job. <laughs> the kids loved him, so yeah, that's right. <laughs> he was a big part, yeah, big right. part of you starting. So the they've been coming from Augusta for 44 years. Yes. yes. Wonderful. Give them a hand. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Glory. 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 Hallelujah. So, um, Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. 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 Let's pray. Father, we just praise you and thank you for your goodness. Father, I just want you to know how much I'm grateful to your faithfulness. You've been faithful all these years, and you never change, so we know you will remain faithful. Thank you for being faithful. Thank you, Father, for giving me the tongue of a learner that I know how to speak a word today. May everyone have hearing ears and a listening heart and an understanding of the word. Thank you for all that will happen today. Thank you for all that's happened and all that will happen. In Jesus' name. And everybody says, Amen. Amen. <clears throat> so I was saying, we're talking about how did we get here? Faith in God. Everybody say faith, faith in God. God. You know, I remember we've been pastoring five, six years, maybe maybe seven, and a young couple come and ministered in our church, and they were youth ministers at the time. And we went out afterwards, and they asked me, uh, in all the years you've been pastoring, you know, six years, what can you tell us about pastoring? I said, I'll tell you one thing. God is faithful. God is faithful. And uh, I just keep telling people that. God is faithful. <clears throat> My voice is blessed. Amen. 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 So... Um, Do you have anything now? <laughs> Turn to Psalms 32, 8. I'm going to share some scriptures and then I'm going to talk about my, as Jerry Savelle calls it, adventures of faith. <laughs> Go through some things and if you'll just listen, I believe the Lord will minister to you. I got this scripture. I've been saved for uh, maybe a couple, three years, and I got, and this scripture, I got a hold of this scripture. The Lord ministered this to me through another minister. I will instruct thee and teach thee in the way which thou shalt go. I will guide thee with my eye. Look at the Amplified Bible. <clears throat> Look at the Amplified Bible. I will instruct you, teach you in the way you should go. I will counsel you with my eye upon you five times in that verse. He mentions you. I will instruct you. I will teach you. I will counsel you with my eye upon you. 
You don't have to figure it all out. Just trust me that I've got it figured out. Amen. And I'm telling you folks, if God can take me where I was to where I am now, he can do that for you. I did not know a whole lot about being led. Some things I would just do because I was impressed to do it. Now, go up. <clears throat> To verse 7. I was looking at the, thou art my hiding place. The number one place that God will start leading you, instructing, teaching you is in the hiding place. Amen. Thou art my hiding place. Thou will preserve me from trouble. Thou shalt compass me about with songs of deliverance. Notice uh, in uh, 1 Thessalonians, I need some water. 1 Thessalonians says that for God, Paul prayed that God would preserve our whole spirit, whole soul, and whole body for the coming of the Lord. Here it says, he will preserve me from trouble. Where does that start? In the hiding place. In the hiding place. Thou art my hiding place. Say that. The Lord, the Lord is my hiding place. Is my hiding place. Amen. <laughs> <coughs> Say this. I am hidden. I am hidden. In God, in God. Not, not from God. Amen. You know, Adam and Eve hid themselves from God because they got out of God's hiding place. Yes. They got out of it. Mm -hmm. And so that they, they lost that. Now, um, Verse 9, a lot of people don't like verse 9. <laughs> Be not as the horse or as the mule, which has no understanding. It means just do it. He's going to lead, guide, instruct. Somebody said, we a minister here one time at a conference, says, if you're leading and nobody's following, you're just going for a walk. <laughs> Notice it says, he is my hiding place, and I will guide the instruct you, teach you in the way that you're to go. And then it says, don't be like the horse or the mule. That has to be trained. Just learn how to flow. That's what it's talking about there. Trust me. I'll lead you. God says, I will lead you. I will guide. I will teach you. I will guide you. I will instruct you in the way you are to go. Let me do a little side journey here. Number one way he leads us is through his written word. When It's not as often now because I'm kind of learning. But we used to go to meetings and somebody, and I'd get called out. And um, after a few times, Pastor Darlene said, why don't I ever get called out? And then she heard Brother Hagen. I did too. He said, the only reason you get called out, a person gets called out, is usually because they're maybe about to get off or something. If God, if you're never called out, you're walking right where God wants you. Pastor Darlene looked at me. Oh, who's getting called out? Remember that? I do. 
I was, <clears throat> I was listening to Brother Randall the other day, and he was talking about being led by the Spirit of God. He said, and he talked about uh, different situations. He talked about Paul. He got caught up to heaven, had revelation from God. Ooh, awesome. And then there was a, 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 a demon to buffet him. Mm -hmm. And then others got words. And he said, Brother Hagin says, you never want to get a word from the Lord because you know some hard times are coming. You know? <laughs> so anyway, God says, I will instruct you. I will lead you. I will guide you. Why? Because I have a plan for you. Yeah. Are you here today? Yeah. Psalms 37, 23. This one, uh, this one I, I, I would um, really embrace this one, Dale. The steps of a good man are ordered of the Lord. And he delights as he, and he delights in his way. I used to look at that a different way, but this past week I was looking, I found, it's, it's when, notice, the steps of a good man are over the Lord, and he delights in his way. You delight in the Lord, then the Lord's able to order your steps. Amen. You have, he has to have cooperation. Yes. Trust him that he will. Notice that the steps of a good man are ordered. The steps of a good man are ordered of the Lord, and he delights in his way. Now the next verse. Though he fall, you mean if God orders your steps, you can still fall? Yeah. But he'll not utterly be cast down for the Lord upholdeth him with his hand. There was times I fell, not into sin, but the Lord just brushed me off and I'd get up and we'd go again. Yeah. Hallelujah. The most awesome, one of the most awesome scriptures for me when I, a few months ago, was dealing with some things in my life was Hebrews 13.5. It says, the Lord says, I'll never leave you. I'll never forsake you. I'll never fail you. Amen. I'll never release my hold on you. Notice what it says. Um, I will never leave thee. You might feel like he has, but he's already said he'll never. Amen. Never. Never. Somebody said once, if you ever fall, don't run from God, run to him. Yes. Amen. But he put it up there in the Amplified Bible. I like this here, Paul. For God himself has said. God himself has said. God himself. When I would read that, it's just something about God himself said it. Not somebody sending me an email right, right, right. saying God said. Yeah. God himself said it. Yeah. And I will not in any way fail you, nor give you up, nor leave you without support. I will not, I will not, I will not in any degree leave you helpless, nor forsake you. Or no, relax my hold on you, assuredly not. So if you've fallen, get up, brush yourself off, and go again. Amen. Are you here today? Amen. I remember a few years ago, um, well, it was quite a few years ago because we were still living at 33rd and West Street. And um, I would go downstairs on Saturday. Well, I mean, I'd pray during the week, but on Saturday I'd go down and pray three or four hours and I'd come up for a few Saturdays and Pastor Darlene, bless her heart, she'd say, 
what God tell you? And I wanted to cry because he didn't tell me nothing. And uh, about the third time, I said, honey, if God tells me something and I pick it up, you're going to know. You don't need to ask me. You remember that? Oh, my God. I got to where I don't know if I want to go down there. But, you know, he was speaking. I just, he was speaking. I just thought of that. He was speaking. So this went on for a few months. And a minister friend of ours began to, had a word for me. And this is what the Lord, Lord was speaking. This is what he was saying. I'm going to teach you how to walk strictly by faith with no feelings. Pastor Darlene's a thinker. I'm a feeler. So when I'd say, talk, talk to her, I'd say, what, what, what kind of feel do you have about it? Well, she didn't understand that. When she would say to me, what do you think? Oh, I don't think, I just feel it. But, um, but uh, I mean, I would go down there and pray for hours and nothing. But God was teaching me how to walk strictly by faith with zero feeling. It's good now, but it wasn't at the time. <laughs> Strictly by faith. I think the first, I don't know, maybe I didn't, but I probably pastored in the flesh for about 10 years. It was all about feelings. On Sunday, I felt that anointing. My goodness, I'd preach up a storm. On Monday, I felt like quitting. Man, I mean, I was on the mountaintop on Sunday and in the valley on Monday. But once I come out of that, walking by faith with zero feelings, it changed my life. And he was speaking all the time by, te by what he was teaching me to do. Live strictly by faith. Are you here today? So anyway, the steps of a good man in order, that though he fall, he'll not be cast down. Why? Because the Lord will not leave us. He won't forsake us. He'll hold us up. Are you here today? That's the kind of God we serve. Amen. 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 Isaiah 58, 11. Glory to God. And the Lord shall guide thee. And the Lord shall guide thee. It didn't feel like it. But he was doing it. It didn't feel like it, but I had his word. It says continually. Do you see that word there? Yes. He will guide us continually. You might think it, you're not going nowhere, but he's still guiding. Amen. Says he would. I will guide thee continually. I'll satisfy thy soul in drought. I began to become satisfied in my soul when I got rid of those feelings. See, I felt like I was in a drought, but he was satisfying me at the same time. Are you here today? He was working on me, working and make fat your bones, and there shall be watered gardens, springs of water, whose waters fail not. Say this, the Lord, the Lord will, guide will guide me continually. continually. I have a, we have a book at home. I don't know if it's by, I don't know for sure, is it, but the title of it is When God is Silent. Now, it used to be, now, people will say silence is golden. It didn't used to be golden to me. 
but just be, but do you see what I'm saying? Yes. God was teaching me to walk strictly by faith and not by feelings. He wasn't speaking in an audible voice, but he was speaking through getting me to learn how to walk by faith. Yes. By faith. Isaiah 48, 17. Glory. Thus saith the Lord thy Redeemer, the Holy One of Israel, I am the Lord thy God, which teacheth thee to profit, which leadeth thee in the way that thou shouldest go. Notice it doesn't say I'll lead you in the way you want to go. I'll lead you in the way that you should go. Yeah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Sometimes I'd go in the way I wanted to go, and sometimes I'd fall, but thank God I knew enough to get up and repent and just go on. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Notice stranger they will not follow. I go before my sheep and they follow me. Are you here? Yes. Jesus said, my sheep know my voice. Yes. Say, I know, I know. His, voice. his voice. God, Jesus, Jesus said, my sheep know my voice. Yes. Don't ever say God's not speaking to me because he is. Yes. Just work on hit, hit, hit. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. When you're just spending time with the Lord, sometimes you need to just say, Lord, speak, and thy servant will hear. That's what happened to Samuel, wasn't it? Mm -hmm. The Lord spoke to him, and he went to, to Eli. Mm -hmm. And Eli says, no, it wasn't me. And then the third time, uh, Eli says, well, that's the Lord. She said, so the next time you hear that, say, speaketh, Lord, and thy servant will hear. It's never on the sending end. It's on the receiving end. Are you here today? So, July the 21st, 1974, I was born again become a new creature in Christ. And I believe it was, now like I say, I'm not, I'm no day. I believe it was two weeks, like the first of July. I'm near as I can recall. I'm not like Brother Hagan. I'm learning, but Brother Hagan, he can quote the dates and the street address and all that, you know. But um, I was sitting in my luxurious, studio in uh, uh, apartment. apartment with a quart of whiskey and a two liters of 7-Up and had been, had become an alcoholic and had been taught once an alcoholic always. And I was trapped, but I wanted out, but I didn't know how. But I said, actually, probably to God, I prayed. I said, if I could only change. Two weeks later, I believe, I changed. Because God heard my prayer. He stood standing at the door of my heart and knocking. And I said, I didn't know that much about, I didn't know for sure there was a God. But I said, if I could only change. And God got on that like white on rice. Yes. He, those were sweet words to him. And they become sweet words to me. As I said, if I could only change. Two weeks later, I didn't just change. I got born again. Amen. 
Glory to God. I become a new creature. I mean, glory to God, a new creature in Christ. And I tell people this. I had about a quart of whiskey in my refrigerator. I walked home from church. I come home from church, and I went over to the a refrigerator, and I got that whiskey out and started pouring it down the drain. And Donald, I was pouring it down the drain, and I thought, my God, something's happened to me. <laughs> and I couldn't stop it. I went, you know, and, and I was just, and then you know what happened? My sink burped. <laughs> <laughs> and my pipes were drunk for a couple of days. Never took another drink, Amen. never shook one time, Amen. totally delivered Amen. by the new birth. Amen. I remember, I'm telling you folks, the trees were greener. And, and then, and, and it was so awesome. I could look at women and not lust. And I knew something had happened. And I did not know. They give me a Bible. And near, as far as I can tell, I opened my Bible. Now, it don't work like this all the time. I've tried it. <laughs> but I opened my Bible, and my Bible opened to 2 Corinthians 5, 17. If any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. And it dawned on me, I know I'm new. Because everything else looked new. Amen. And that was the beginning. That was the beginning. And um, in August or September of 74, I went to some meetings with a minister from Missouri whose name was Dwayne Friend. And he was uh, meeting at Thorough Junior High. And he was there four days, four nights. And every night he talked about something that I had in my previous life. So when he had an altar call, I'd go up. <laughs> the fourth night, he leaned over the stage and he said, Son, I believe you're going to make it. <laughs> Glory to God. I was not taking any chances. I mean, I was going up every night and getting myself in line. And the fourth night, he said, I believe you're going to make it. And bless God, thanks to God, I made it. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. And then in <clears throat> January, January or February, somewhere in there, I went in one morning and uh, 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 the, uh, the supervisor said, the foreman, the boss wants to see you. So I went in to see him and he says, um, Jerry, because of the cutback and everything, we'll have to lay you off. Well, I knew they weren't cutting back. But anyway, <coughs> anyway, so I got on, I was working in experimental. I was an expediter. And I had what they called back then a little Buddha, a little um, scooter-like with a, a bed on it. I'd carry parts around. I got on that scooter, and I headed over to the, <laughs> the main plant. And I went down behind where they was painting the planes, and I was standing out there. I'll tell you, the steps of a good man are order of the Lord. I said, Lord, because I was getting a check every week. And it was pretty good then. Back then, it was pretty good. For a single person, man, I was, I was doing all right. I was getting all, before I got saved, I was getting all the whiskey I needed, you know. <laughs> oh, my. Before I got saved. So, so I'm getting this check every week. So when I'm praying, 
I wouldn't say it in my prayer. God, I'll do whatever you want me to as long as I get that check every week. I didn't say that in the prayer, but that's my thinking. So I'm standing there behind the, the flight hanger where they're getting the finished airplanes. I said, God, what am I going to do now? And I heard the Lord down here, not an audible voice. And I heard these words, you're going to trust me now. I was trusting that paycheck. I, my trust was in that paycheck. And I said, God, what am I going to do now? And he said, you're going to trust me. It's been the best ride I've ever had. Learning to trust him. Glory to God. Glory to God. So, so I got laid off. And um, I was praying. And uh, I was living with my aunt. And she let me have the master bedroom. So I literally had a walk-in closet. I thought when the word said, go to your closet, man, I'd go in that walk-in closet. And I got on the floor and I started praying. Steps of a good man order the Lord. I started praying. And I'd been praying maybe an hour or so, and I was just impressed to get a hold of Dwayne Friend. Well, my aunt knew him, and so she was able to get his number. So I called him. I told him, I says, I don't know if you remember me, but I come up at your meetings every night. I just got saved and, you know, and that. And, and uh, he said, yeah, I think I remember. And I says, he said, so what are you calling? I said, well, I just got laid off. And um, I just was impressed in prayer to call you. He said, well, uh, do you have any obligations? I said, no. He said, why don't you come and go with us and uh, we'll go out on some crusades and, we'll, and you go with us and we'll see if, that, if you're in can fit into the ministry. So I took off and went to Missouri. And we went to Richland, Washington. A little side journey here. He had a big Greyhound bus, and we'd ride this bus. And on this bus, they had a trash basket with a spot painted on it. And wherever we went, usually they'd bring pie or whatever. And you didn't know the people. You didn't know what kind of shape it was in. So if they, if they didn't eat it, they'd just throw it in the trash. And then if we'd go back there and somebody said, how was the pie? They'd say, it hit the spot. <laughs> they said. I didn't say that. I didn't get in. <laughs> so we made... Um, uh, Trish to Richard, Washington, Erie, Pennsylvania. And then in June, I believe it was, right? We made a trip to Bad Axe, Michigan. <laughs> and uh, I would do the product table. Uh, back then it was records. Um, we was there for a few days a week and uh, then they were going to do uh, a camp meeting not long after that in Mountain Grove mm -hmm. and you come and Todd didn't one with you no, no. three others, three others. Yeah. they come and um, so that began the fellowship with Pastor Darlene now, I'm going to tell you something I'm in Michigan, I'm in Kansas, and she's in Michigan. Steps of a good personal word of the Lord. We got back from Michigan, and Dwayne Friend told me, he says, it's what he told me. I remember what he told me. He said, Jerry, I don't believe that it's going to work out for you to be involved in the ministry. Go back to Wichita and pray because I believe you're called. I remember him saying that. Well, there was no need for me to be with him because I went up there to meet Arlene. Yeah. Yeah. 
I thought I was going up there for the ministry. But God's ways are higher. It was to meet her. I didn't have Facebook dating game and all that stuff. Dating app. You know all I had? You know all I had? The Holy Ghost. Glory to God. Thank God I didn't miss God. Amen. Amen. But God was guiding all the time. Are you here? So I get back, sitting in a trailer house with a friend that was a drummer on, with the group. And I was waiting to go come back to Wichita. And I'm sitting in this trailer house, steps of a good man of order. And I looked over here and on the bookshelf with some books. And I pulled out a book. I pulled the book out and I looked, I started reading it. And I thought, my God, who's this guy? I'm going, I got to go. So I'm, we're in Springfield doing a, a meeting, doing, uh, Dwayne Friend doing some meetings there, and a couple come from Tulsa that were partners with him. And they come up to the product table, and I says, I hear Brother Hagen. I don't know who Brother Hagen is, but I guess he's Brother Hagen <laughs> in July, and I'm going. I wouldn't have a I didn't want making enough and having enough money to go for a week. And they says, good, when you come, stay with us. <laughs> oh, my goodness. So what steps of a good man were in the Lord? Man, I went to Tulsa and uh, camp meeting. And uh, uh, I met this friend from Texas, and uh, we would run in the service at the drop of a hat. And, I, and we found out that Ken Jr. told the ushers, keep an eye on those two. <laughs> and uh, one time, one time was having a service, having somebody's minister, and I had my Bible down here leaning up against the chair in front of me, and the service was going really good, and my, I kicked my Bible over. It fell out in the aisle. So I reached over to get it, and the girl sitting by me thought I was going to run. And she jumped and hit me, knocked me out in the aisle. I thought, sure enough, they're going to come and get me. For one week, I heard Fred Price, Dr. Fred Price, Mark eleven twenty three, and Brother Hagen, Mark eleven twenty three. I heard Mark eleven twenty three, Mark eleven twenty three, Mark eleven twenty three. My God, I thought, I thought three times I died and went to heaven. I mean, it, and then I heard about Rama. Yeah. They had just finished graduating the first year, mm -hmm. 1975, the first year. And Ken Jr. is telling about Rama. And I says, I'm going. I'm going to Rama. I am going to Rama. And then the, he says, if you don't know if you're called, don't come. We don't have room. Well, I didn't know I was called. So I thought, well, I can't go because I didn't know that I wasn't called. Stephen, a good man, over to the Lord. 1976, May of 1976, I'm at a graduation, Raymond graduation, one of the junior high schools. And I'm sitting there with uh, Glenn and Betty and the others, you know, and I've got the outside chair. And Rama students, graduates, were walking in. And there was about halfway through or so, and I'm sitting there, and, I, and it just come up in me. I'm calling you to the ministry. Go to Rama. Well, I had a hard time just sitting there. 
I'm, oh my God, I knew it, I knew it, I knew it. So um, I started making plans. Let me tell you, I started making plans to go to Rama, and I got a job that paid me more than I'd ever been before. And so I had to deal with, you going to give up that job? You gonna, aren't you going to go your way? See, I'll lead you in the way you should go. And I thought, man, man, I'm making good money. But I knew, I knew, I knew. So, so I, by this time I had already invited Pastor Darlene to Tulsa to some meetings with Brother Hagin. So we, you know, just having fellowship. So I called her. I told her I was going to Rama. I'm going to Rama. You remember that? A few months later, right? I'm working in the field. And Dad comes out. I'm in Oklahoma working in the field. And this is what he said. He said, that lady from Battle Axe. Remember that? He said, that lady from Battle Axe, Michigan. I want you to call her. Remember that? So, man, I got it cleaned up and went in. I was I come to Wichita, and I was at my brother's, and I called you. We talked a little bit, and you says, oh, by the way, I'm going to Rama. Yeah. Remember that? Yeah. And I think I hung up on you. You did. <laughs> I hung up on her. And I went into my bedroom, and I got on my knees. And this is how I prayed. Jesus, you better let her know I'm not getting married. And she, if she's coming there just to marry me, you better let her know. That's just how I prayed. Isn't that right? I could just see the Lord now. If you only knew... So, <clears throat> so then in 1977, September 1977 to May 1978, I went to Rama. We went to Rama. All right, now here, it gets really fun. December, Pastor Darlene tells me, God said, we're supposed to get married. And I told her, God can put my mail in my own box. And Darlene, which wasn't Pastor Darlene at the time, said, why don't you check your mail? And it's like, you remember the movie Got Mail? Yeah. Somehow, Dr. Dufresne heard about that. You told him. So every time he would come, <laughs> have you checked your mail? <laughs> so, so I'll tell you this too. Cause, uh, so Pastor Darlene's going to Michigan Christmas, 77. And Todd, mm -hmm. and she said, "People are going to be asking me, when are you getting married?" <laughs> and I says, "Tell them to mind their own business." <laughs> well, she was already submissive before we got married, because when she come back after Christmas, she said, "Somebody asked me when we were getting married, and I told them, Jerry said, "Mind your own business." <laughs> And you know what they said? They said, is that what they teach you at that Bible school? So Darlene comes back and tells me that. And I said, why did you tell them that? She said, because you said for me. <laughs> so, 
So, um, so we went through, finished Rama. Seventy eight and uh, seventy nine, early seventy nine. I got a word from the Lord from a, a fan that went to Ramah with it. Now turn and run toward her. And the Lord says, the name is the same. And if you'll get in prayer and seek me in prayer, you will know. I tell people this. For a few months, I didn't even pray over my food because I'm afraid God's going to tell me. <laughs> but I did pray over my food. So I prayed after, after a while. I was, I was still being like the horse and the mule. But then it, it just come. So I just shut myself in for three days and fasted and prayed for three days. The third day, it just was just strong. It was Darlene. Darlene. So I knew. I knew. Everybody say, I knew. You know how I knew? Steps of a good man order the Lord. So this was like February or March. Yeah, probably March or April. So July comes camp meeting. And Pastor Darlene says to the Lord, if Jerry don't ask me, no. I just said if something doesn't happen, this year, between us, I'm going on with my life. <laughs> that was in January. <laughs> so July, we're at camp meeting. And I'm kind of asking her different questions to see if she would, if I asked her to marry me, she'd say yes. So I kind of talked around it to kind of get an idea, and I was pretty sure she'd say yes. So we're standing, and we're singing, Abraham's blessings are mine. And we're singing it, and I turn over, and I said, Darlene, would you marry me? And you said, yes, Abraham's blessings are mine. <laughs> Remember that? Uh -huh. Yeah. And then I had to ask me again, because I wasn't sure I heard Because the music was a little loud. Yeah. So I said yes again. Hallelujah. And so then uh, July, and then September the 1st, we got married. December the 2nd, started the church. Sold a house, bought a house, made a move. You have five major decisions in less than a year. She was dealing with something. Now, listen to this. It's good. You were dealing with depression, some. Uh, I'm not quite sure. Pastor Buddy called you out in Florida. Right. When I went with Bobby Jean to Florida. Yeah. And said you made a lot of decisions in less than a year, mm -hmm. and it's taxing your mind. Mm -hmm. Remember that? Mm -hmm. And he ministered to you and got you delivered. Mm -hmm. And when you come back, you was like a different person. Mm -hmm. Don't overload your life. Don't do it. You can only handle so much. Even, you know, even with the word, you know, in the word and all that. So, um, so we got married September the first, and um, I have in my notes here got mail. And then in May, okay, in May, nineteen seventy-eight. 
somebody was talking to me at Rama, uh, kind of about um, what are you going to do? I won't go in depth, but what are you going to do? And out of my mouth come the words, I'm going back to Wichita and start a work. I realized now I was prophesying because I didn't have no idea I was going to start a work. So I was prophesying that out, going back to Wichita and start a work. So you're going to get a good laugh out of this. So August, I think might have been somewhere 79, maybe more sooner than that, I'm coming to Wichita on the interstate, and I said this. A prophet is without honor in his own country. And I was trying to tell the Lord, it won't do me to go back to Wichita because the prophet's without honor. You know what the Lord said? You're not a prophet. <laughs> so, so that didn't work. That didn't work. So I, so I come back, and uh, I was praying, and the Lord said to call so-and-so. Steps of a good man are word of the Lord. So I just called them. And uh, they said, you know why you called? I said, no, I don't know why I called. And they said, well, I do. I said, why? And they said, well, we've been talking and praying about getting somebody to come to our church and teach us faith. So I went and had dinner with them, and they talked about it, and we prayed about it. And so I went there and start on Tuesday nights. I would have a service in their church, and they would allow me to take up offerings. And what come in, uh, I got the offerings in that, and I not only helped them to learn faith, but I helped their people to learn faith. And uh, people started coming, a good turnout. First night I preached, I'll never forget it. First night I preached, man, I'm running those scriptures. And I'm just a going, and there's a guy sitting there, and he, he was thinking so hard, he said it out loud. Slow down, I can't keep up. <laughs> and uh, it was like Lloyd, you know, I wanted to tell him, well, get you a tape recorder tape it <laughs> so I was able to get my feet wet to get and, and move on that and then in um, 79 early 79 you know uh, uh, Buddy Harrison laid hands on me uh, in the ministry and he said well when he laid hands on me he said in two weeks you'll know your call when it? Mm -hmm. In two weeks, you'll know your call. Mm -hmm. Two weeks, Bobby Jean, Apostle Bobby Jean Merck, and Melton was in Wichita ministering at the church where I was doing my Bible, doing mm -hmm. teaching there, you know. Mm -hmm. And she ministered three days or something. And Sunday morning, she's about through teaching and getting ready to close the service, and all. And she, she went. You've been like a worm. Remember, she got on her hands and knees. The Lord said, you've been like a worm. You think you're unworthy, but I made you worthy. And then she says, and God said through her, I've called you to pastor, and you will pastor. That's just how it come out. It wasn't, would you please? No, it, and I knew I was going to pastor. I don't know. I don't care where it was at. I know I'm going to pastor. But you know what? That night I got down on my knees and I said, Lord, forgive me for, for being like that. Part of the reason I was acting like a worm is I didn't think I could be in the ministry because I was divorced. And the, the denomination I come out of, you couldn't be divorced and be in the ministry. So I thought I couldn't. But I found out from God he is bigger than the denomination. So that night, that Sunday night, I got on my knees before God. Well, I said, Lord, forgive me for not obeying you. And the Lord said, I forgive you. Now go on doing what you're doing. I didn't go out the next week and start a church.
But I knew I was going to pastor. And that went on. And then uh, uh, September, we got married. And then uh, October, somewhere in there, you know, it was, it was, there was something I said, it, it's time for us to start the church. And uh, I had heard uh, Ken Jr. do a message on uh, always causing us to triumph. Isn't that right? Yes. And I'm out in the field or something, and it come to me. Name the church Triumphant Faith Center. Yes. Triumphant Faith Center. And then, this was why. Everybody that comes will become triumphant in their faith. Glory be to God. Triumphant faith. Not almost triumphant, but triumphant. And so, um, so here we are. This is how we got here, where we're at right now. And next week, I'll share probably some more because I've gotten some more from the Word since then because the Lord said to me through the word, if you'll separate the good from the bad, I'll use you as my mouthpiece. Mm -hmm. And I'll talk about that next week. I won't go any further on that today. The steps of a good person are over the Lord. I'm telling you. I'm telling you. I lived in Kansas, and she lived in Michigan, and she, God told her, you were created for me? Mm -hmm. Yes. And that was when we just didn't know each other very long. Yeah, just, yeah. I'm in Kansas. She's in Michigan. But God, nothing, I'm telling you, nothing is too hard for God. Yeah. If he can get me from Kansas to Michigan to Bad Axe. <laughs> you know, I thought about that. If I hadn't obeyed God, Todd would not met Jeanette, maybe. Yes, that's right. But thank God, God the steps, the steps. Mm -hmm. I don't know how many times I, whatever it did, but the steps. Yes. The steps of a good man. Amen. And I remember this. I remember after I met D Darlene, I'm telling the Lord what kind of a wife I want. I mean, you know, she's got to really be turned on. And one day it dawned on me. If I'm wanting that kind of a person, that person's wanting some kind of a man. And I thought, I better work on myself. Because at the time, probably, I mean, I was leisure suits and crosses and necklaces and all that. You know? So I thought, I better work on myself. Get it. So you know what I started doing? Seeking first the kingdom of God. Don't go seeking a mate. Please don't. If you're here, don't seek a mate. Seek the Lord, and that mate will be added to you. I didn't know. She's in Michigan. I'm seeking God. I'm thinking I'm going up there for meetings. And God says, if you only knew, you know. He's probably saying that. Whoa. And the Lord probably said, I'm going to get you there. You know? So awesome. God will lead us, yes. guide us. Well, I don't know if he will. He will. Yes. He is, and he does. Yes. Amen. He'll get you there. It might have took longer than it did, but we got there. Got right? There. Hallelujah. Mm -hmm. And you know, I'm so excited. I'm so excited that I asked Pastor Darlene to marry me. And Bobby Andy's there at camp meeting. And of course, when we went to Rama, it was smaller, so we just knew everybody. So I'm going up to Bobby Andy, and I said, Brother Bob, I'm going to ask Darlene to marry me. And she said, Yes. And you know what he said? It's about time. <laughs> he said, that. Bobby Andy and Brother Bob said, It's about time. So uh, a few others, yeah. <laughs> and some of them thought we were married. I don't know if he wants me to. Maybe he wants to tell us. 
So anyway, we're driving to camp meeting from Pastor Darlene and Todd is living in Broken Arrow. And uh, Todd's sitting in the back seat. He's got his arms up on the seat. And I could see in the rearview mirror every time he would, um, was thinking. And now we're on Broken Arrow Expressway. Busy street. Right, Pastor? Yeah. And Todd says, when you and mom get married, can I call you dad? And I about run off the road. I thought, oh my God, what did I get myself into? No, I thought, can I be responsible enough And you know, I was telling the, the man that yesterday, and the Lord says, look at the man that's here. They're still with you. Amen. And I look at you today, and you're with us. Amen. And we're going on. We're going forward. Amen. And what an honor to come in. What an honor to pray and study and come and get in the pulpit and feed you the Word of God. Amen. What an honor. Amen. Because... Every one of you, are resp you respond to the word. And then most of you take and, and check the word to make sure what I said was right on. And it's a, what an honor. You cannot know what an honor it is to, to, be, to be called to pastor you people. It's awesome. Glory to God. Hallelujah. It's awesome. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Hallelujah. You know, I'll close, I'll close here. It's my second closing. <laughs> I was reading in 2 Timothy 4 where it said, preach the word. And then in, and it said, endure afflictions. It's going through. Mm -hmm. So I was telling Pastor Darlene that we received a word back in the When the going gets tough, you're going to get tougher. Well, I, we remember a minister wrote a book, said, when the going gets tough, the tough get going. Mm -hmm. yes. Hallelujah. Yes. Hallelujah. So thank you. Thank you for loving God. Amen. Serving God. Hungering for God. Thank you for loving Pastor Darlene and myself. Thank you for loving our son and our daughter-in-law and our grandchildren. And thank you for loving each other. Amen. Glory yes. to God. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. So um, next week we'll, 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 if the Lord leads, if the Lord leads, we'll go that way. Amen. Hallelujah. Rebecca, come up here. 
Lauren. Hallelujah. Before we go, I asked Rebecca how old she was <laughs> when she started coming here. I'm as old as the church. So I start, I think maybe around 40 years ago. I think I was maybe preschool, kindergarten when I first came. I, preschool, yeah. Because I was in preschool at three or four, and that's when I came home singing, Lord Jesus, come into my heart. And she said, I got to get this kid in church. And we went to one other church that I don't remember, and then all I remember. So you know, know no other pastor? No. Just you. I'm Pastor Lord. Shirley. And we have Wynn and a lot of others Katie. that, yeah. 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 And Josie. Katie. Josie's never Josie. Josie. Brandy's never yeah. another pastor. And others. And uh, Traylon. Uh, Traylon. Yeah. yeah. Kendra. Kendra. I don't think she's ever had another pastor, no, has she? I don't. Yeah, she told us she went to another church, uh, and she said, I dried up. Yeah. Do you want to say anything? No, I, I remember dry, I had got a hold of a Kenneth Hagin book and Charles Capp's book, and I was praying one day, and I said, Lord, if there's somebody around here that teaches like this, this is the best stuff I have ever heard. <laughs> and I came by here, and uh, Charles Capps was on the Marquee. Billboard Marquee thing. Girl. And I go, well, thank you. And we start coming here. <laughs> Glory. Wonderful. Give him a hand. Hallelujah. Glory to God. So uh, I'll share this and then we'll go. Being she brought up Charles Cabs. When we uh, got married and started the ministry, I wanted to minister with cowboy boots. The pastor audience says, no way. You're not going to. So we had been in meetings with Charles Capps, and he had cowboy boots when he was ministering. So we had him come here and minister, and I'm thinking when he comes, and he's ministering with cowboy boots on, I'm going to say to Pastor Darlene, if he can wear them, I can too. So I'm sitting there, and I look down, and he had loafers on. <laughs> so we went out, took him out to eat, and I said, uh, Brother Charles, oh, God. I said, Brother Charles, I noticed you used to minister with cowboy boots on, but you have loafers on. He says, yeah. I said, why? And he said, Peggy won't let me. Well, I said, don't say that. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, we're going from here in, in a minute. The, the chicken's probably there. We're going over to the AC for fellowship and food. And uh, all that good stuff. And we'd like to everybody to come. Amen. We can't twist your arm, but we can invite you yes. to come and have time of fellowship and food. Mm -hmm. and, and then we'll go home and continue our life. Amen. Everybody stand with me. Turn to somebody and say, the Lord leads us and guides us. The Lord leads us and guides us. And you're free to go.